Alright you guys, got another video here for you. In this one we're going to be taking a look at some steps to help you uh, protect your system against ransomware, malware and other types of nasties that you get on the internet. So let's take a look at some of the steps that you can take to protect yourself and your computer and your data uh, from this malicious uh, type of infections. So let's first take a look at the first step which is backing up your data. First off, it's important that you keep a regular backup of your data just in case uh, you get hit with ransomware, crypto ransomware, which will encrypt all your data. And you can either do this inside uh, Windows itself. If you just type backup here, you can see backup and restore. You just type backup in the search and you can use the actual uh, backup facility here. And you can go through, I've made videos on this before, so you can just watch some of those videos. But basically you can create a system image and go through uh, there. And also create a, a system repair disk, which will allow you to uh, revert back to that image if the PC becomes unstable or non-bootable due to malware and stuff like that. So you can use this method. Now if you don't want to use that method, there's another way of doing it. You can actually purchase a uh, software as well and also use free software now macroom reflect has been about for a long long time and there is a free version that you can use and I've also made videos on this and you can also use this uh, software to back up your data uh, and it's very important that you do that now if you do want to purchase a piece of software online cloud software stuff like that then iDrive uh, and software like that carbonite are the other options that you can use now these do some great deals and you've seen me post these on my forum if you watch my forum you've seen me put these up there as little as five dollars uh, for the year for a terabyte so also take a look at this and this this is a really great product i drive it's one of the best out there so i mean for the first year you, if you ever look around uh, and keep an eye out you will get this for uh, cheap as five dollars for the first year or six dollars or something like that uh, but that's pretty much it for those so that's the backup uh, process that's the first step that you should take now the second step I would say is run as a standard user and uh, you can do that inside Windows I know it's a bit of a pain uh, but it's just another step and it does block most malware uh, from the system it will start to protect your system more than what some antiviruses do so to do that it's another security layer we can go to right click on the start button and go run and we want to do net uh, PL Wiz inside here click OK and this will open up the user accounts now from here you can see every computer will start off its life as running as administrator this is really dangerous because when malware comes onto the system it doesn't need permission to run it's already got permission because you're using uh, the full admin uh, privileges on that account so you want to change this account to a standard user and it's pretty simple and easy to do and I'll show you how to do that all you need to do here is add another user so we're going to add another user here and you can see you can either do the sign in method or you can do uh, the sign in without a Microsoft account it depends on what you want to do okay Microsoft account local account we're doing local and we're going to call this admin just like so and you can put a password in I would suggest you put a strong password I'm just going to do a simple password a bit more than that but just say that just for this video I'm doing a quick password but you should put a stronger password on there okay and we're just going to call that that now you can see this is a local account and there's no administration privileges on here but we're going to change all that right now now if you haven't got the pro version you will need to go in and use the settings and i'll show you how to do that in a second but from here you can see that this is the administrator still so we need to go to um admin here then go properties and then group membership and from here we're going to change this to administrator apply and okay and now you can see we have two administrators we're just going to drop the Brightech account or your account back down to a standard user and you can do that straight in here like so now there's other methods uh, to strengthen this up to restrict uh, programs and stuff like that uh, group policy and stuff like that and I will I've covered a lot of those videos uh, but we're not going to do that in this video but basically now we're set up you can see here we've got the administrator 
uh, which is the admin account as you and we're going to log in always as Brightech or the account that you created which is a standard user now that means anytime you install anything you will have to put in your password and that's fine that's okay it's a bit of a nightmare to do uh, if you don't like doing things like that it slows the process down but it also blocks most of the malware out there on the internet okay because it needs to run as administrator to install itself now does it block all of uh, ransomware no it doesn't crypto ransomware will still run even though you're running as a standard user it doesn't need those privileges to run so just remember those things so we're going to click OK here we will need to log out and log back in and now we can log back in and make sure you can see the admin here and you can also see the Brightech one you want to log into Brightech which is just a standard account that's uh, step two that's really important to do that so once we've got that I just wanted to show you if you haven't got the pro version you will need to go to start and inside here uh, you can set up your accounts as you can see here and you will need to do it inside here okay and create uh, your accounts inside here and you can also do it inside uh, control panel which is the uh, older way of doing things user accounts and still go in and create new accounts here and you can see we're running as a, a local account and no administration privileges here and if you wanted to do that you can uh, do that so if you want to manage another account you see because we're running as a standard user it automatically wants my password to go into those locations because I haven't got privileges to do that because I'm a standard user so that's really really important okay so we're just going to come out here and say no and we're going to back out so you won't be able to install anything uh, or anything like that uh, to try and uh, run on the system because you will need the password and you just put the password in and it will let that install without a problem okay so next up we're going to need to get ourselves an antivirus now there's a load of antivirus software out there and you can also use windows built-in windows defender if that's what you want to do it's entirely up to you as long as you use an antivirus uh, that's all that matters but you're going to go here and you can see windows defender here is grayed out at the moment uh, we're not using that and uh, we can open uh, windows defender uh, you will need to enable this via uh, the administrator because we're running as a standard user we would need to open this up and of course turn things on but because we are uh, a standard user we would need to put in our administrator password and allow us to turn functions on and then start to turn all this on but you would do that as administrator and then go back out again it's pretty easy to do so we can turn it on from here and it will ask again for your password and then you're pretty much good to go and this will be running as of uh, once you've got this enabled here now uh, if you want to as I said want to use an antivirus program there is plenty of other options out there free options are things like Avast which do a good job they're free and also you've got Komodo which is free and there's loads of other ones out there uh, AVG and stuff like that now if you want to go down the paid route there's also uh, paid ones which you can use which are Kaspersky uh, total uh, security and stuff like that, which come with firewall uh, which we'll talk about it on the next step as well and also you've got things like Bitdefender, ESET and loads of other types of uh, antivirus programs for paid versions as well so it's the choice is yours whether you like to go down the paid route or the free route it doesn't really matter as long as you've got some sort of antivirus program running on your system so again if you want to uh, run a firewall I would recommend that you run a firewall as well now if obviously if you get down a paid route most of these come with a firewall as well as an antivirus um, so that might be uh, something you want to go think about but there is free uh, firewalls out there and we'll take a look at those next so as for firewalls uh, you can use the built-in windows firewall um, the only trouble uh, with the built-in windows firewall it doesn't give you much control i.e. To, uh, uh, to say what you want to allow to come in or go out of your computer uh, so you may want to uh, use another software type firewall which you can download for free there's a lot of these available uh, this one is Komodo this has hips protection as well built into it I found this a little bit heavy just of late so I've moved away from it um, but you can still use it it's still very good uh, firewall 
Zone Alarm uh, is another firewall that's made a little bit of a comeback. I've been using this for a while now. It's fine on Windows 10 as well. And also you've got the uh, Privacyware firewall here, which is another type of firewall which you can use. Now, obviously, this has a HIPS protection as well. You don't need to... Uh, you don't need to use a firewall if you are using uh, antivirus software with built-in uh, firewall. Uh, so it's a whole suite sort of thing. You know, you don't need to use that. You you would just only need to use this if you're using, say, a VAS free uh, antivirus or something like that with no firewall. Then you can use something like this, or you can carry on using Windows. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but this will give you added protection as well. So that's what I would suggest you do uh, for your next step is to use a firewall. Next up you can get yourself some ransomware uh, software, anti-ransomware software that's going to protect you and uh, you can get programs like Malwarebytes Premium to run alongside your antivirus program uh, and stuff like that and your firewall and this will be fine. Um, they just upgraded their software so it's got all their goodies installed into one program now which is uh, for rootkits, ransomware, you name it, malware, uh, anti-exploits and stuff like that. It will block everything on there for that. Also, you've got other software like uh, Zamana anti-malware as well, which you can use, which also uh, claims to block a lot of other stuff like ransomware and stuff. There is also WinAntiRansom, which you can use. You've seen me do videos on all this uh, software, and they all do very good at blocking. Uh, some do better than others. This video is not about what's the best, it's just about what you can use uh, alongside other stuff. So also, we've also got the uh, Secure A+. And again, if I've missed any other software, uh, then I'm not going to sit here all day and list out loads of software. But these are some of the softwares that you can use in conjunction with your other types of security software. Uh, like antivirus programs and stuff like that so that's where I would go uh, with that you install this and alongside other antivirus software and you should start to become more secure so let's uh, move on to the next uh, step which we can do okay let's move on to the next step which I would say is to block or control what type of email attachments you've got coming into your email client. Now there's loads of email clients that people use, uh, but Outlook is probably the most common. And you can, I will make a video on this as well. I have just sort of wanted to cover this, but I'll just quickly show you here uh, what you can do. You can uh, set it up to restrict uh, EXE files and stuff like that, okay? And that's how you can do that. And it does this in all different versions. But I will make a video on this on how to uh, restrict certain types of uh, extensions inside your email clients. Also uh, set up the email monitoring through your antivirus and stuff like that which will help uh, but again don't open up attachments from people that you don't know uh, and don't open attachments from people you don't trust. It's really really difficult sometimes um, to, to cover every aspect of it all but basically if you're getting uh, if you're waiting for a parcel or something like that and you get an email from that company which is pretty common and it's left a little uh, file inside there then make sure that you don't click on it uh, just randomly like that because it could be a spam email and you will click on it and you could end up getting ransomware on the system so you just got to be very very careful uh, with uh, attachments and stuff like that because that's a really common way of them getting onto the system now, we're not going to cover browsers here. I mean, you can also go on and on uh, protecting uh, the browser with add-ons and stuff like that. The list's endless, really, but these sort of simple steps should start to protect you uh, against ransomware. Now, also, probably one of the biggest gripes of me with Windows uh, over the years is not showing file extensions. And I don't know why they don't do it. It's so simple. And files, file extensions are these here, which you can see, .7z and stuff like that. So, And this is really simple uh, to do for uh, Windows, and they should be doing this by default today. I don't know why they don't do it, uh, but if you go into this PC and uh, you show View and Hidden Items, and you can still see the options here in Windows 10, 
in view and you can see here show hidden files folders and drives and also you can see the tick is taken out here but this also hides the file extensions now what this is going to do is help you identify what you're looking at so if for instance if we're looking inside pictures here we can see this as a JPEG okay and what they commonly do is they use an image which looks like a PDF file and basically they change the extension so you can't see it, it looks like a PDF file and it's actually an executable file you click on it and you end up getting infected and this is a real simple step so it just lets you identify what these file extensions are .jpeg, .exe and so on and if we go into uh, the actual drive here you'll see uh, what I mean so if we go to system32 not even system32 you can see them here .exe we know these are .exe files and if we took that uh, that hide option away that simple tick there and when you come down and look at these again you can see you don't know what they are and it's very easy to trick people they actually just change the uh, icon uh, image to make you think it's a PDF file and it's an actual .exe file they just hide the extension why they haven't done this over the years I don't know it's, it's a real mind boggle for me because it's just a visual thing that actually lets you see uh, what the extensions are here okay it's easy to trick people that way and that's probably uh, one of the most common ways of getting infected as well as clicking on stuff so basically that's about it really uh, there's other steps that you can take but these are the simple steps that you can take to protect you against ransomware and malware and stuff of the like. Okay, so I hope this one helps you out, guys. Uh, my name is Brian from BrightechComputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also, hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when we upload new videos. Also, if you've got any problems with your computers or you just want to join the forums uh, and join the community, then head over there. The information's on the screen. And if you haven't joined my Facebook fan page and you want to go over there and give us a little like up or write a review, then uh, the information's on the screen right now. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.